and there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of our Final Cut Pro tutorial. I'm going to take you from start to finish on the process of editing uh, some of the most basic techniques in Final Cut. Those basic techniques are going to be utilized via an interview with a dance instructor named Rom, um, with B-roll clips that have been taken, with a sound score that's been chosen, with a production logo that I may pull from one of you guys, uh, with credits that we're going to create. Uh, we're going to learn how to key out a green screen and isolate uh, with opacity uh, two dancers so that we key out the background and it becomes opaque or opacity uh, see-through on the background. We can do layers. Layers are superimposing layers. And we're going to learn all kinds of different techniques on creating an intro and also techniques on using transitions and a couple of filters. Okay. With that, this see, these are the basics in Final Cut Pro. With that, we have to have a folder to be able to work from. So what I'm going to do and again, in this demonstration, I'm having to work back and forth between a um, screen share that's in Zoom and also um, what I'm recording via my QuickTime player. All right, so check this out. So this, we should all see. I'm going to ask for some recognition. John De Los Santos, can you see the folder that I have open? Yeah. Okay. And if I'm clicked on blue two, you see blue two right there? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Very cool. So ladies and gentlemen, here is the folder. The folder that we're going to start with, that I'll explain, happens to have a couple of different things that we've already captured. Okay. Okay. Here is, and I'll make this larger. Oh boy, makes the whole screen. Let's see if we can get, there we go. John, can you now see uh, Rob, the guy with the hat on a little bit larger? Yeah. Okay. Hayden Brown, take a look at this. As I play the Rob dialogue video, are you able to see the entire video? If you look at the Lindy Hop, you yes. see a couple just moving. They're constantly moving. They're You're able to see that? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that is when I hit the space bar on my keyboard, I'm able to preview the videos that have been taken. So imagine if we were at school and the intercom came on and there was just a voice announcing something. Think how... Think how unpresentational that is, if that's a good word. <laughs> Think how dry and flat that is. All that is is a talking head. You're not seeing anything that they're talking about. You're not, um, you're not entertained by anything that they're talking about. There's no sound score to enhance it, to liven it up. None of that. It's just a flat presentation of information. And with this interview that we've got from Rob here, this is about 26 seconds length. Okay, It's a quick interview. Based on this interview, listen from start to finish how this would be if this is all we videotaped and all we popped up onto YouTube as the dance instruction video. Okay, check it out. If you look at the Lindy Hop, you see a couple just moving. They're constantly moving. They're always on the go. They go around a circle, mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie-woogie steps. You use your whole body. So you kick, you use your arms, you use your hips, you use everything in your body to accentuate what you hear in the music. 26 seconds. That was an interview with Rob. He basically talked about when you see a couple uh, moving, they're constantly moving, they're always on the go. <coughs> they go round and round a circle, clockwise, reverse, a lot of stops, a lot of spins, somebody doing boogie woogie steps. We'll come back to Rob, I'm imagining, in my mind as we edit this down. And then we're going to conclude it with maybe a full shot with people dancing. So we got to have those clips taken. We'll take a look at this folder. Not only is there an interview taken with Rob, but we made note. Everything that Rob talked about, we went and shot video B-roll of. So, Bloomies. This happens to be a video clip of a couple moving. They're constantly moving. They're always on the go. There's one. 
Next one. Jeremy Solo. A lot of boogie woogie steps. Look at that dude's legs. He, it, his legs went boogie woogie. So that's a perfect clip because he's doing the boogie woogie for the part where Rob says there's a lot of boogie woogie steps. We're going to cut that in. And if you notice, when we shoot these B-roll clips... There's a little bit of excess at the beginning, and there's a little bit of excess at the end, and the prime shot is somewhere in between, which gives us room to edit. Because remember, when you bring these down onto a timeline and you edit them, you're going to need some cutting room on front and back of the video clip. Okay? So let me play this Jeremy Solo clip again. Watch. No, no, no. Yes! Right there, prime, and out. And there's excess. I don't need anything in the dark. Didn't look good. He was out of spotlight. But there was a prime two, three seconds where he was in spotlight there. That's a cool shot. Johnny and Carrie. All right. We see a couple always on the go. There you go. Now, I'm going to pause this at the beginning. Check out Johnny. Nicole, what's the problem here with this video clip right now if I were to use it? I don't really know. It might be to, uh, I don't know. It's okay. I put you on the spot. This is okay. Check it out. He's looking at us, isn't he? Are you seeing that dude? He's looking right at us, isn't he? Yeah. So that's called breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> You don't want your um, subject matters to be staring into camera because then it feels like we're being looked at. Instead, we need to edit the clips that make it feel like we're observing this interview. We're observing this B-roll. We're observational. You don't want any of your actors or actresses to stare into camera. Make sense? That's called breaking the fourth wall. So in this case, watch as I scrub this forward. Boom. There's a point right there where I can cut where we can use this clip where it becomes the couple going round and round a circle or the couple dancing together without him staring at us. Okay. What else? We've got overhead. That's our closing shot. That's a shot with everybody dancing. That's going to be our ending shot. So I know that for sure. That's going to be a good one. We already know what Rob dialogue is. Round and round. Oh, this is a good one. This couple goes round and round in a circle. Mostly clockwise. There's a lot of stops. A lot of spins. And then it's going to go into the boogie woogie step guy. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is one of the coolest edits to do. Let me explain. So in this part where this guy goes round and round in a circle. Lots of spins. Boom. He's about ready to pop to the ground and pop back up. When we say the word, or when Rob says the words, there's a lot of stops, a lot of spins. When he says stops, that's kind of like on that point of a music video where the beat hits and the wave crashes in the video and you match those frames up to where the audio beat hits and the wave crashes and it's an impactful moment because it's a match. So... We'll show you how this looks without it matched up with the audio like that. And then when we match it up where Rob drops and stops and the guy says, Rob, the interview says there's a lot of stops. That's called a match frame edit. So cool. You'll use that a million times, but you have to recognize the technique. You have to know that that's what you're purposely doing as an editor, because that's what makes magic happen for the flow of the people viewing it. Okay. Very important. So check this out, my friends. We've got a folder full of B-roll clips and Rob talking. We also have a sound score. This sound score is... And then... I could go on, but guess what? That's an instrumental. It's got a nice poppy beginning. It's got a dip at a point where it's background-ish. Perfect for our video. Why? Because in our intro, this is going to be going off when the intro text and graphics go. 
and then it's going to drop when Rob starts talking, and then we'll pick it back up at the end. Remember, sound scores are great for when someone's talking, you dip lower, it becomes ambiance. When there's highlights and other things happening and no dialogue happening, it becomes foreground, moving and grooving, um, editing music. Okay? So this sound score matches perfect with this swing swing time today, this swing dancing um, uh, music video. So where would we resource this? Folks, you already went on Killer Tracks. So you realize that we can resource music from a database that's licensed free music. That's where we bring this track in. So I've already downloaded it, brought it into the folder. We've also gone out and videotaped all these B-roll clips and the interview and brought it into the folder. So you don't have to. This is what we call production. We went out and filmed it. Okay? How about the intro that we're going to create? There's a folder that I've got called compositing pieces. Okay? We have a clip right here of a couple dancing in front of a blue screen. Remember that a blue screen, just like a green screen, can be keyed out. Now, let me show you something here. Do you see this left and right side? Hannah, yo, what do you think that is? What's happening here with this little white smudge and this little piece over here on the right side and left side? What is that? Hannah, are you with me? Hannah, yo. Having a hard time hearing you. Ian Vogel, what do you think, buddy? What's this stuff on the left and right side of this clip? Like other stuff, but like, uh, I'm not sure. Well, check it out. Where do you think we film these folks? Is it a green screen, blue screen wall? It's a big wall in a room, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the sides, you know, it's, it's like the room isn't yeah. endlessly blue, right? These are just the sides of the wall. But what we're going to have to learn to do, Ian, is we're going to have to learn in the editor to crop those out. So we'll cut away that edge. We'll cut away this edge. And then we'll do what's called chroma keying. We're going to key out this blue background. Do you notice that on the attire of these people, do you see any blue or green on them? No. No. That's also important, Ian. What if that guy was wearing a blue shirt? When we key out the blue, his shirt's going to get keyed out, and then he'll be see-through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What What if he had really blue eyes and we did a close-up? If we put anything in the background, it's going to come through his eyes when we key out the color, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be careful about that. But we're going to learn that technique of keying out that background because here's the deal. We're going to have them on a triangle. Now, the triangle you can't see because it's a QuickTime movie. It's floating, and we're going to have a curtain in the background, so we have to download a curtain from the internet, which I've already done right here. I've actually downloaded a couple different curtains. There's one. There's a second one. That one's not so good, and why that's not so good is because it's got a fake stage, and it's square, but this other one, it's wide. It's rich in blue. It's cool. We like that one. So I'm going to use that second one right there, that PNG. Um, let's go back to the compositing pieces. So we're going to have a curtain. Then we're going to have a triangle. That triangle you can't see right now is a preview because, it, like I said, it's a quick time movie. Then we're going to have those people dancing on the triangle, and we're going to key out that background. Then we're going to have text. Now, if you see this jumble of text, if you read into it, there's jitterbug. There's Boogie Woogie, there's Lindy Hop, there's all, there's four different text layers that are jumbled together. We're going to pull all those off of each other, we're going to shrink them, and we're going to do a technique called stop motion keyframing, which means we're going to give them motion in life. Connor Baird, have you ever watched a photo enlarge in front of you and move towards you or away from you in a video shot, in an edit? Oh uh, yeah, I think I've seen that. Okay. So when you've seen that, what they are doing with that particular clip they're doing with that photo is they're doing a stop motion keyframe technique. So we can do that exact same thing with text. We can have text start small in the upper left-hand corner and come out big in the middle. We can have it start small in the bottom corner and come out big in the middle. So as we start to um, use that technique, we can have the text fly across the screen and move, okay? 
And then at the end, we're going to have a composited text end. So we have all this content already created, and now we're going to edit it all together. So that's the key when you guys work on a film project, is you got to go out and get all the content first. Go get the sound score on Killer Tracks. Go film the interview with Rob. Go shoot the B-roll with all the people. Um, go into Photoshop and create that text. Or you could do that in Final Cut. And same with the title, Swing Dancing Today. You can create that in Motion. You can create that in Photoshop. You can create that in some other text editor. Or you can do it in Final Cut, in your video editor. The triangle, that's a little trickier. We had someone in 3D animation make that for us and bring it in. Is it a necessity? No. But it's a cool little thing to bring in and show you how it flips up and how it works. So how does this intro look when it's finished? Well, when it's edited and finished, check this out. It's going to look like this. Blue curtain, triangle, dancers, flip, swing dancing today. Didn't catch that the first time? Keely, check this out. We're going to break this down. What are our layers, Keely? What's the first background, furthest background layer we have in this? Wouldn't it be the, um, like the background, like the curtain thing? There it is, the curtain, yes. Did we have to key out anything in the curtain to make that show? I don't think so. Absolutely not, because it's the furthest in the back. It's the, it's the background. Hayden Lai, what's the next layer? Probably the text or the triangle. The triangle. The triangle, because watch the text. That's going to come over the people, and the people are on top of the triangle. So the next layer is the triangle. Now, here's the benefit of 3D animation. When they made the triangle, it already had an opaque background. It was a see-through background. Okay? So we were good there. Now, Tobiah, how did we get those people onto the triangle when the original shot was was this what do we have to do with this video clip to get it to this place i can't hear you tobiah I see you trying. I'll come back at you. I can see your mic is not working, but try to get it to work, okay? Sophia, how did we get those people, those dancers, onto this clip and um, get rid of that background? Um, like, isn't it like the blue screen, so you, like, transfer it on there? Well, the blue screen is just like a green screen, a really bright green screen. The editor has the ability, our photo, Final Cut Pro editor has a filter that keys out or gets rid of anything that's blue or green, right? And if you look, she's wearing black, he's wearing black and white. There, nothing in their hair or their face or their jewelry or shoes is blue or green. So they completely stay consistently there in the shot and the, green the blue screen in the background is gone. Now, once that happens, we're going to be able to shrink them or enlarge them. We can shrink them and put them on that triangle. I'm going to show you that technique. It's so cool. Um, or we can enlarge them and make a background that's New York City and make them fight Godzilla. <laughs> it could be funny. Now, the next layer, Gabriel, what is the next layer? What is this thing down here? Would that be the text? That would be the text. Remember the jumble of text? I'm going to reverse this. We have, from the beginning, we have the Lindy Hop, and look at it. It starts small and it ends big. It starts in the left and ends to the top middle. Next is Carolina Shag. So we're overlapping it. Do you notice that the text, when we have it move, it never overlaps each other? Why would that be, Gabriel? Uh, because you have the text pop out one at a time. Well, we not only have it pop out one at a time, but why would, right now, why wouldn't Carolina Shag start up in the upper left? Why are we having it start in the bottom left? So they don't overlap. And why wouldn't we want them to overlap? Because we don't care that the text is overlapping over the people or the triangle or the curtain. Uh, because then people won't be able to read it. Boom. It's that simple. It's that simple. The purpose of us having text on here is so people can read it. 
So by having it do intervals of top and then bottom, then top, then bottom. Watch, Carolina Shag's the next bottom one. Then, whoop, there it comes. Boogie Woogie's the next one, and it goes to the top. Then Jitterbug's the next one, and it goes to the bottom. There's four different texts. And then watch what happens right here. The dancers disappeared as soon as the triangle starts moving, right? They're gone. We'll remove them. Well, I'll show you how to remove them. The triangle flips up, not because we did it, but because the person that made it in 3D animation and gave it to us created that. Now check this out. We have text that pops up and says, swing dancing today. And the little eye rotates. And that's what you can create in motion or a motion um, text generator, which we have in Final Cut. That's a really cool, powerful text. Makes for a really cool looking intro title. And so there's the intro, no sound score, just a cool intro. And that's about six seconds long, but guess what? That thing, that intro, making it, it, it takes a while. So we're not going to make that first. We're actually gonna start with what is easiest, which is Rob, his interview, all the B-roll, and, but we don't want to pop in the sound score. In fact, we're not going to pop in the sound score till the very end. After we do the intro and pop it into the timeline and then put the sound score in, that'll be one of the last things we do. Okay. So what is this going to look like when it's finished? Campbell, check this out. If you look at the Lindy Hop... You see a couple just moving. They're constantly moving. They're always on the go. They go around a circle, mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie-woogie steps. You use your whole body. So you kick, you use your arms, you use your hips, you use everything in your body to accentuate what you hear in the music. Okay, Campbell, what'd you think? What entertained you about that video? Uh, I just thought it was, there was all different scenes of people dancing. And it was very like each scene that they were doing a different dance. And it was lively and it was informative and it's entertaining, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, what'd you think about the intro? How did that help you understand what we were about ready to watch? It like informed you that it was about dancing and swing dance. Boom. So we established what we call an opening shot. Now, we didn't have to take a film, a video of the dance studio and the marquee out in front saying um, Dance Club USA, whatever it is. <laughs> let's, I'm making that up as we speak. But let's say, let's say we wanted a different technique. Instead of creating a grand intro, we do a panning um, shot of the marquee of the business um, out in front of their facility from the parking lot. And it shows Dance Club USA with Rob Rob Smith, okay? So if that says that already out front, that's our establishing shot. But instead, we created this, which is a lot more work, but it certainly it what we're gonna what it enables us to do is show you the techniques of stop motion keyframing, superimposing layers, um, intervaling text. That's why we're using this because I'm showing you more unique techniques with this particular intro. So, uh, Keely, what's the significance of once Rob pops up on screen, what's the significance of having that lower thirds box down there? Why should we do that? So that you know what the scene is. Well, not only do we know what the scene is, but who is this guy, right? And why is he talking to us? Why should we even listen to him? Noah. What's the significance of putting his title down below his name? Uh, just to show who he is. Yeah. Well, if he's going to be talking about dance moves, right off the bat, we know Rob Smith is a dance instructor. Right off the bat, we know he's an authoritarian on the information that he's about ready to share with us. If that ends up being the case, then right off the bat, our viewers feel like whatever content is given to us from this point forward is valid. Like if we were, if we were doing a documentary on wrestling and I did an interview with Wayne Branstetter, um, 30 year, uh, wrestling coach, I think whatever he has to say, I'm probably going to believe he knows what he's talking about. 
right? This is key. So you're establishing the importance of who this person is and what they're saying. Now, do I need to pop up that lower thirds box, Megan? Do I need to pop up that lower thirds box every time Rob pops back on screen? No, because we already know who he is. We already know who he is. Thank you. So, so to pop up a lower thirds again would be redundant. So it's not necessary. So let's go backwards. We got Rob. We established the talking head. Then he talks about... Oops, dang it. You see a couple just moving. All right. Nick, Ward, what did you just see in terms of video B-roll? Like a smooth transition, I felt like. Yeah, yeah, it was okay. It was kind of, it was. it's what we call a butt edit. There was no, I mean, the only smooth transition about this was it went from Rob to dancers. But, but listen to what Rob has to say. Oh, like a, you see a couple like just moving. Like say, video. say that one more time. Say, mm. say that one more time for us. Oh, I was going to say that like after he brings it up, uh, it gives like an example of like what they're saying as well. Yeah, well, listen to the words that he says. You see a couple. Listen. Listen mm. to what he says and watch what you see. If you look at the Lindy Hop, you see a couple just moving. Did I just see a couple just moving? Well, and they did like the Lindy hop as well. But he didn't say anything about that, did he? No, I think he said like a couple doing the Lindy hop like in the first part. Let's listen to that again. If you look at the Lindy hop. If you look at the Lindy hop. So these folks are very, very key that you just noticed that. This couple is doing the Lindy Hop. And when he says, you see a couple, watch. You see a couple just moving. So I didn't just see that guy in the shot. I didn't just see that girl in the shot. I saw both of them, a couple just moving. This is going to be key because this B-roll clip starts with this guy only on the screen. So you're going to have to learn to cut this at the beginning to the point where you get the couple because of what he says. That's important. Constantly moving. They're always on the go. They go around a circle. Raya, what he just said, did you just see the B-roll of that? And what was it? It was a couple going around in a circle. Boom. That's the B-roll. That's the B-roll that we needed to keep note of and film. And we did. Boom. And we're going to edit it right on time. Okay. Next. Mostly clockwise, sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops. That is key right there. Ryan, Mancuso, did you just see what that guy did? What did he do? As you said, he was turning clockwise. They were moving, and then he said they'd go the other way, and they reversed it. And then the key element, he said there's a lot of stops. Watch the flow of this, dude. To me, it's like a perfect music video when you see... The flow of that guy, when Rob says there's a lot of stops, that guy drops to the ground and pops back up. Watch. Sometimes reverse. There's a lot of stops, a lot of spins, a lot of boogie-woogie steps. Ah. Johnny Gould. This is a very unique thing that we just did between this clip and this clip. Look what happened right there. What happened right there to the video... That hasn't happened to the other videos as a transition. Uh, our transition was like a curtain and it opened up to the next scene. Yeah. And you know what would have been not right is to do like a swirly toilet look or a page peel. Because those are all digital trans uh, transitions. And those are cheesy. If you all want to be a wedding videographer and uh, the cheesiest of the wedding videographer videographers out there, You'll do those types of cheesy transitions, but I'm asking you don't do that. The most common techniques of transition are no transitions at all. They're called butt techniques, butt ups. Notice that when each one of these B-roll clips in the beginning happen, right between Rob and this clip, there is no transition. It just butt clips right into the next. And this one right here, boom, boom. That's called a butt edit. There's no dissolve there's no page peel there's no swirl there's no flash it's boom from these guys 
to these guys. And it isn't until this point that we get a transition because we're going to learn that there are different times where a transition is appropriate. Now, Vasco, why would we choose that curtain transition? Why would that sync well with this video clip that we're seeing next? No idea. No idea. Okay. Do you see this guy right here that's about ready to do the boogie woogie steps with his legs and what he's standing on? Yeah. Okay. Does it look kind of like a stage? A little bit. A little bit. So between the other clip and this clip, if we do what's called a simulation, like a simulated curtain, that would be a simulation to this guy being on stage. Would it be deemed appropriate? I guess. Why not? Right? Or we could have done a dissolve. But the stage curtain peel actually is a pretty decent look. So you're going to learn some techniques of transitions, digital transitions. Let's keep watching. Boogie woogie steps. You use your whole body, so you kick. Morella, why would we come back to Rob in the interview, in this edit? Um, I don't know. Okay. This is a technique called reestablishing the talking head, meaning... Some guy was talking to us at the beginning. Oh, yeah, Rob Smith. And as he talked, we were watching video clips of people doing what they're doing. In fact, when you watch that intro video of, of Z Trip, remember, we watched Z Trip talk, and then we saw a bunch of B roll while he was talking, and then it would periodically come back to him in the interview. Because, we, because it's a six minute inter interview, we were reestablishing who is this dude that's talking? Oh, it's, there he is, Z Trip, Z Trip, Z Trip. We kept seeing him. Well, in this particular video that's 30 seconds long, we reestablished the talking head once. You want to know who's telling us what, what's going on. Oh, yeah, it's Rob Smith, that dance instructor. He knows what he's saying. And then... You use your arms. You use your hips. You use everything in your body. Jonathan Evans, why this clip at the very end? It shows everyone doing it. And why would I show that at the end? Because it's not going to be the beginning where it's focusing on the two people he's talking about at the beginning. Yeah, or the individual dance moves, right? This is a culmination of everything that just happened. It's everybody's dance moves. So this is what, Jonathan, this is key, what we call a closing shot. Now, another thing we could have done is if we started this whole video off with a marquee of the front of the building, we could have ended it with a um, panning shot of the marquee to the sky and then run credits at the very end in the sky um, as we showed that in the video, right? That would have been also a closing shot as well. Yeah. yeah. But right now we decided we're going to keep this all inside and a great closing shot will be everybody dancing. So Rob, will finish this off. To accentuate what you hear in the music. And then the sound score pops back up instead of being background. So that's an editing technique. And then when the song says, don't be no square, we should probably throw a little technique of a square off and then some credits and a production logo at the end, probably. Okay. And don't be no square. And we'll do that. All right. So that concludes the content that we, this shows us what it's going to look like after we're done editing it. This shows us all the content that's going to be inside of our folder. This shows us all of the content that's in for the uh, intro, along with I needed to go out and find a blue curtain. So we pulled that off of the internet. I went to Google. I searched for blue curtains. I downloaded it. I've got myself a blue curtain. License free. No problem. Okay. And now we're going to have to bring it up into a video editor. So what video editor will I use? I'm going to use Final Cut. Bring up for you. Looks like, let's get back into Zoom. Let's go to screen share. There's Final Cut Pro. So I clicked on the icon of Final Cut Pro down below and here's the software that popped up. Now this was an old production logo that I popped up on screen, okay? <clears throat> now how do I get rid of that? And then how do I start a brand new project? Well, here we go. Chase, Domino, I'm going to do it right now. Watch this little technique. Can you see Can you see Final Cut basically on my screen right now? 
Yes. Okay. Check it out. I'm going to go up here to file and I'm going to close any open library that's currently there. Look at that. This is a blank Final Cut screen. So we're going to open it up in just a moment and start it off. But I'm going to tell you ahead of time, here's what we got. So Chase, over here in our library is where we're going to start the project. Over here in this open folder area is where we're going to put the content. Like if I was a painter, it's going to be all the paints. In this case, it's all the video clips that we've got, along with the sound score, along with any of those um, um, graphics that we created. See this box right here? This is what we're going to call the canvas. It's going to be our viewer. It's like a monitor to show us what, what it is we're working with in this video editor. See this down here, Chase? This is called the timeline. You can't tell because it's blank right now. But that is where we're going to cut and chop and move everything onto a timeline to edit. This up here, nothing to inspect, is our tool, tool palette that's going to allow us to um, navigate filters that we throw on, transitions that we throw on. It's going to help us um, edit things. And then these meters right over here are called audio meters. And so they're going to allow us to see the audio priming. Um, if we're clipping in terms of audio, if it's too hot or if it's too under recorded. Okay. So we're going to bring in all of our content right now. First of all, we got to start a project chase. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the start of the editing process and final cut. As we begin, I'm going to show you how we start final cut. Here we go. We're going to open a library. Now, we could open a project that's already open, or we can create a new project. Ladies and gentlemen, this is vitally important. When you begin a new project, you've got to click new. Now, from the beginning, Final Cut records everything internally in Final Cut. If I make an edit, and I want to go back and undo that edit, it allows me to do that. It knows where I went forward, and it knows how to go backwards. Okay? So it's going to start by saving my project right from the very beginning. Now I'm going to save it to this folder in the NTSC Swing tutorial and I'm going to create a new folder inside of this because it's going to be my project folder. And this is going to be my period one tutorial. Okay. Boom. That's a folder. And this project is going to be called Swing time today or swing dancing today i think yeah why not swing dancing today boom now i save it check it out you see this chase it's created a folder over here inside of final cut now it's prompted me to do the next phase this is second phase what i'm about ready to do that means i have to import in all the content from those folders here we go. I'm going to click that button. It's interactive. So I'm going to click import media. Now it's saying, where are those clips? Well, it's on my desktop. So I've got to go to my desktop folder to import them. So I hit desktop. Oh yeah. I saved them in a really easy folder to get to, which is NTSC swing tutorial. Oh yeah. There's my blue curtain. I'm going to import that. Here we go. I'm going to right click inside of that box again and import more media. Here we go, Chase. I'm going to import all those compositing pieces, which was everything that was the dance, the text, the dance text, the title, and that triangle. I'm going to get all those guys. So I'm going to select all of them and hit import. Now they're all here inside of my browser. And I'm going to right click and import some more. I'm going to go backwards, back to my NTSC swing tutorial folder, into my dance shots folder. There it is my Bloomies, Jeremy Solo, Johnny Carey, the Jump Town audio track, the overhead clip, Rob Dialogue, Round and Round. I'm going to get all of those and import them in. Now we're ready to rock. Next thing I'm going to do, Chase, starting tomorrow, is I'm going to start a timeline. And we're going to start editing all of these clips on this timeline and recreate what we did 
and start to show you all the unique techniques of how to edit in Final Cut Pro.